The message tonight is called Kingdom Key of Transparency. Kingdom Key of Transparency. Please turn with me to John, the first chapter and verses 1. Sorry, John, the first chapter and verse 47. John chapter 1 and verse 47. Let me know when you're there. John chapter 1 and verse 47. John chapter 1 verse 47. We're all there? Okay. So John chapter 1 and verse 47 says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. So what happened here is that Jesus pretty much um, just finished got, getting baptized by John the Baptist. Okay, He met, he met uh, the brother of Peter, Andrew. He met Simon Peter. And now he's meeting uh, Nathanael for the first time. So this is like when it's just like his gathering, like the original disciples, the very, very beginning. Um, okay, and so, and let's read it again. So, uh, Jesus' son, Athenael, coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no gal. So what Jesus is saying is that, you know, before Nathanael ever even spoke to Jesus, just as he was walking to meet Jesus, Jesus is like, everybody, everybody, check this out. This guy is a real Israelite in whom is no gal. So I'm going to break it down. First, there's two, two key words, Israelite and gal. So we're going to see what an Israelite is according to the Bible. Then we're going to see what gal is because what Jesus was saying is that a true Israelite is someone who doesn't have any gal. So we're going to go slowly to make sure we understand. So we're going to look at what is an Israelite not according to Google, because I, I googled, you know, the definition of, of Israel on Google. It's not a true one. The Bible says something else. So trust the Bible over Google, okay? So let's go to Genesis chapter 32, verse 27 to 28, to see what the name Israel means. Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 to 28. Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 to 28. Were there? So before I read, I want to explain what's going on. So here, Jacob, who God changed his name to Israel, is wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Okay. And, and after he's wrestling with the angel of the Lord, the angel said, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the angel, like, you know, hit him on, on the hip and then blessed him and pretty much left. But here's what the key word about Israel and what it means. So uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 27 to 28 says this, And he said unto him, What is thy name? So the, the angel says to, to Jacob, And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men, and hast prevailed. So here, the angel of the Lord tells Jacob, okay, because you've been wrestling God to get a blessing and you prevailed, so your name will no, will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. And then, he's, and then he tells us the, the meaning of the name. He says, because you have power with God as a prince. So the name Israel, okay, means prince under God, okay? And so that means that, you know, Jesus, when he saw Nathanael coming to him, he said, wow, everybody look. And, and just, he, didn't say, he didn't say about Peter. He didn't say about John, Matthew, Luke, Mark. You know, he said about Nathanael, like, you know, he came to him and just like literally stopped everybody, everybody and said, look, look at, look at this guy. And remember, Nathanael didn't even spoke to Jesus yet. He just, he just walked into him 
And Jesus is already amazed, and he said, everybody, look, this is a real prince under God because he has no gal, okay? So what? So now we know what Israel means. Israel means prince under God, okay, um, and, or which is blessed by God. Now, what is gal, okay? So basically... First of all, Jesus said to Nathanael that he was a true prince of heaven because he had no gal in him. Now, the Greek word for gal, and because we're going to Greek because the Old Covenant was written in Hebrew and the new one in Greek. So the Greek word for gal is the word dolos, okay? And the word dolos means uh, deceit, manipulation, and treachery. So this is what this is the revelation that 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 that, that Jesus is telling us. Okay, he says, okay, this guy's just walking to Jesus to meet Jesus. Okay, and Jesus said, everybody stop, look at this guy. This guy is the real child of heaven. In in essence, by by calling saying he's the real Israelite, because the Bible the Bible says before even Jesus came to the earth, the Bible says that 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 the Israelites are are, are the little ones or God's children. Okay, so. So what Jesus was saying is that, look, everybody look, I didn't even start my ministry yet to preach about the kingdom, and here is the real son of God already in front of you. And he says, and the reason why he's the son of God, or a prince of heaven, is because this guy, you know, um, has no deceit, which means like he really walks in the word of God, okay? Of course, he means that he doesn't lie, but it means like more importantly that, that he really walks in the word, okay? Because if you don't walk in the word, how can you be a son of God? Okay, so so what he's saying about this guy is that okay, this guy really walks in the Torah, in in in, in a prophet, in the law, and 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 number one, number two, he says this guy, okay, this guy has no manipulation, which means this guy never tries to make things happen for himself. This guy always waits for God to move for him, okay, and treachery, which means this guy, okay, is faithful. This guy, you can depend on him, you can trust on him. So here, before, before this guy even says, hi, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said, man, you are a real Israelite, which, in other words, you are a real son of God. And the reason why is because you truly walk in the word. You never try to make things happen for yourself. You always wait for God to move for you. And, you know, God, God can see that he can trust you. You've been faithful with a few, and now you're going to be my disciple. So... What a true son of God is, is someone who doesn't, uh, who doesn't have deceit, someone who doesn't manipulate, and someone who doesn't, um, um, doesn't um, have treachery. Now, so with this information, we can now fully understand that Jesus said concerning Nathanael, look, look at a real son of God. This man truly obeys the word of God and always waits for me to, to open doors for him. Instead of always uh, manipulating people to receive their desires. It's very important. Now, let's, we're, let's, we're in John 1. Let's go back to John chapter 1 and verse 47. And this time we're going to read from 47 to 49. Let me, let's all turn there, John 1, 47 to 49. Okay, so John 1, 47 to 49 says this. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no gal. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, Thou art the Son of God, and thou art the King of Israel. Look at this. This guy, okay, is a guy, he's a guy who loves the Word of God, who always waits for God to, 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 to make things happen. He understands, I don't need to lift a finger, just like Moses, if, if I walk, if I follow the Word of God, God will always open ways for me, you know. So this guy is living like that. Now, this guy hears about a Jesus of Nazareth. He's like, okay, let me go check this guy, if it's the Messiah. And then, and then he comes. And then before he can even say, hi, Jesus, Jesus said, wow, this guy is the real son of God. 
because he has no uh, manipulation in him. And then, and then he says, how do you know me? He's like, like, how does he even know me? And then he says, before, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Now it's a mystery to us. We don't know what he was doing under the fig tree. We don't know if he was praying. We don't know if he had a vision. We don't know what happened under the fig tree. But all he knew is that, okay, I was under the fig tree before Philip called me to meet this guy. So we can already, already deduce that, that Jesus wasn't physically around him, okay? He was under the fig tree doing God knows what. Then Philip comes and says, Nathanael, come, we found the Messiah. Then he goes to, to check it out. And then this guy says he's a real Israelite because he has no guile or manipulation. And then he's like, who, how do you know me? And he says, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. And then this guy, from, from, that, from that reply, he says, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Okay, so here we see something very amazing. Please, please get this. The Bible shows us that people who walk in the word of God and never try to make things happen, but always wait for God to like open the doors, understanding the word of God says, you know, if I seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, then God will take care of all my needs, which means when a door doesn't open, you're like, that's fine. God is not opening it. And then, and then, and then you're, you're like, God will open the door. So this guy comes, okay. He receives the proof from, 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 from Jesus before even speaking. And then when Christ replies to him of that, that I saw you when you were under the fig tree, from that, you know, he says he knows that he's, he's the son of God. This is what Jesus said. He said, when you, when you humble yourself like a child, see children, you know, they're just like, when a parent says it's time to go, you know, like a, a rebellious child will just be like, no, he'll cry. But of course, a good child of the kingdom will just be like, okay, it's time to go. When it says it's time to sleep, okay, it's time to sleep. So that's why Jesus said that people in the kingdom of heaven are like children. Of course, obedient children, which means they never try to manipulate God or each other. They just wait on God because they know that, that God, when God moves, nothing can stop it. And, and here's the thing. So people who are like that, who always wait upon God, we see here that they have the highest prophetic anointing, okay? And, and not just that, like when they meet people or interact with people, they can see, they can see who they are, they can see their spirit, they can see their intentions. So, so, so Jesus, is, Jesus is saying, listen, a true Israelite or a true child of God, because the Bible says that, that um, whosoever has the Holy Spirit is an Israelite now, that means that, that, that now that we're in a new covenant, Okay, we have the Holy Spirit, Jew or Gentile. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're, you're an Israelite. So basically, like here is the key on how to walk in, a, in a, such a high prophetic anointing to the point that you know who you're talking to all the time. You know, like see, because he said two things very important. He said, number one, you're the son of God, which means that, that like without Jesus even telling him anything, he could look at him because the Holy Spirit, see, like the Holy Spirit was like always, when, when you wait for God to move for you, the Holy Spirit is always moving through you. But when you try to make things happen, you, the Holy Spirit is like, it's not moving because you're always trying to make things happen and, and you miss things. But when you wait for God, walking in his word, the Holy Spirit, like the vision that Christian had about Dean, the, the light is shining so you can, so wherever you turn, you can see what's in people. You can see who's who and what they're doing. So, so basically this guy was like that. Okay, you approach Jesus, and by just looking at him, he's like, this guy is the son of God. Remember, Jesus didn't say, I'm the son of God. He just said, I saw you under the fig tree. And this guy, because, because he's like, he has no gal, so the light of God can shine through him. And he's like, this guy is the son of God. So he, he said two important things. Number one, you're, you're the son of God, which means that he, could, he, could, he, he knows who he's talking to. Number two, he said, and you're the king of Israel. So he also knows why God sent him to earth. So this is the amazing kingdom revelation of tonight that, that we all need to get, is that if you choose to live your life to, to let go of, of like, you know, trying to make things happen for God or for yourself or whatever, well, for God, of course, but that's to be God leading you. But here we see in scriptures that this was not Jesus. This was a, a human being, okay? who looked at Jesus and said, you're the son of God, 
He's the king of Israel, okay? And this is very key. Peter was with Jesus almost until the cross to find that out, okay? This guy, he met Jesus and he, he knew it already, okay? So, so like, I'll talk about Peter a bit, a bit later, but, but realize this, this is how powerful God can move through you if you just choose to, like, you know, let God move, let God open doors, okay? And, of course, that means, like, you know, you, you, wait, you wait on God, and, and when God says, do, say this or do that, then you do it, and doors will open. But if we're always trying to make things happen all the time, we never hear what God is saying, we never see what he's doing, and then we get frustrated because we're always just trying to make things happen. And this is the way, this is the, way the majority of the church is living. You were in church, but, but we'll never be trust that God will do. We're just always trying to do, thing, do stuff. This, Jesus said, like, listen, I didn't even start my ministry yet, and I, cannot, I already found one true Israelite. So, so what he was saying is like, I came to earth to make everybody like this guy. That's what he was saying. He said, the reason why I'm here is so everybody on earth can become like Nathanael. That's what he was saying. And, and so basically, um, where am I here? So anybody who, who lets go of gal, and again, gal means uh, deceit or, or lies, manipulation and uh, treachery. Anybody who just lets go of that and says, you know what, Jesus, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you open my doors. That person will have that level of anointing. Uh, prophet, prophetic anointing and revelation, okay? So again, I repeat, he knew who he was talking to and he knew why God sent him. So that means that if we choose to live like that, whenever we meet someone, okay, God will reveal to us, okay, who we're talking to, you know, and God will, will he, may not, he may not say, you know, this person's name is this, but like he'll just... You'll just know, you'll have discernment and just know, okay, that person is on my side or not on my side. That person is trying to do that. Or it's for, like, you'll just know the truth. And second of all, God will just show you what he called them to do. Because every human being born, God got them born. And at that time they were born for a purpose, which means like you can look at people and you can say, you know what, I see this gift in you. And you're supposed to, and, and like you, because the Bible says um, in Proverbs, that a man's gift makes room for him and, and brings him before a great man, which means that when, when you use your gift, things that God gave you, it makes room for you. That means, okay, like, all of us are like, like we're born and, and, and we're like a seed in God's hands, which means all we need to do is to be planted where God wants to be planted, and then we're going to grow. And then when a tree grows, it just makes room. And it's just like, I'm the tree, I'm here. Like, that's my spot. So God is saying that when we just allow God to move through us, God will make us like that, like we're all the seed. And like that seed, God will make us grow. And when we'll be a mature tree, we'll bear fruit, that people will be attracted to the, to the fruit. So all we need to do is wait on God to become fruitful. And when we're fruitful, people will come to the fruit. Okay, that's how it works. And that's why Jesus said that, that, that we're trees. You know, you know a tree by its fruit. Okay, so, so that's what essentially, like, you know, that's why Jesus always, always talked about seed and, and, and time and harvest. This is, not, this is not just about money. This is about who we are. We are, we are, God does everything in seed form. Okay, everything in seed form. So, so what that means is that if you don't plant the seed, of who you are in a ground of the of God's word, you will not become the tree you're supposed to become. Okay. So now let's go to. Um, sorry, let's talk about Peter quickly before we, before we go there. So, like I said, Nathanael knew that Jesus was the Son of God when he first talked to him. Peter knew much later because Peter use manipulation on Jesus to avoid the cross, okay? So here, here's, the, here's the difference. Nathanael was always waiting on God to move. Peter, okay, was, was the man who, who, who always tried to, to get, to, get uh, uh, to make things happen, to get what he wants. So now let's go to Matthew 16 to see this, to see this. Matthew 16, verse 21 to 23. 
Matthew 16, verses 21 to 23. We're all there. So Matthew 16, 21 to 23 says this. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall, not hap- this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So here we see the sharp contrast between Nathanael and Peter. Nathanael is a man who just, before, before we have met Jesus, he's a man who's walking in the word of God and never tries to make things happen for him. He just always waits for God to move. And God moved one day to make him meet Jesus, God himself. <laughs> See that? Okay. And, but, and so the first day that, that Nathanael met Jesus, he knew that he was the son of God and a king of Israel. Now, Peter, after years of walking with Jesus, Jesus said, okay, you guys have been with me with all, for all those three years. Now, I must do the will of God. I must go to Jerusalem and be crucified and, and be risen up the third day. And what do we see? We see Peter going to Jesus, and unlike Nathanael, who had no gal, Peter is full of gal, <laughs> And he says, I don't want him to, 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 to leave me. I like Jesus. I want to keep him with me. So the, the difference here is that Nathanael accepts what God says. Peter is like, I know what you want, God, but I want my way. And what, so he goes to, to Jesus. Imagine this. He says, he, says, he says to Jesus, he's like, you will not go to the cross. Okay? You will stay here. Like, that's what he says. He says, he rebu- the, the word rebuke means um, like it can be gentle or, or it can be rough but the word rebuke means like correction you know so this guy is like unlike Nathanael he's full like Peter is full of guile which means manipulation to the point that he goes to Jesus and he says you will not go to the cross you're going to stay here <laughs> can you imagine doing that to Jesus <laughs> okay that's what Peter did okay and, and, and what, does, what does Jesus say so let's read it again uh, verse 21 to 23 from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. And then the reply of Jesus was this, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things of God, but the things of men. So what, in, in just plain words, Jesus said to Peter, he turned to Peter, and then he began, to, he began to talk to Satan himself. And he said, get away from me, Satan, because you, you always fight the will of God, because you favor the will of men over the will of God. So the lesson from this is that let's not be like Peter, you know, and, and there's, there's a hope there too, because Peter obviously learned his lesson in the future because, because Jesus made him the leader of the church after he, after he went back to heaven. So, you know, let's understand this is a, this is a call, okay, to become more like Nathanael and, and to understand that, see, Nathanael had, had high prophetic anointing and he, can, he, he, he knew who Jesus was, okay, because, because he, he lived you know, without gal, just following the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Here we see Peter, full of gal, trying, to, manip- trying to, ma- to manipulate God himself in the flesh. But here's what Jesus said. He didn't say, Peter, get, get away from me. He said, Satan. So this is, this is the, 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 the very critical lesson. Whenever we manipulate, we're actually, le- we're actually following Satan, not God. Okay? Never forget this. Whenever 
we manipulate people. And, and here we see people even try to, manip to manip manipulate God. For example, if God says, you know, um, it's time to go evangelize, and then we're like, you know what, like, I'll do it, you know, when this happens, whatever, we're, we're doing what Peter did, okay? So in other words, we need, not just with God, but with each other, with, with the church, with, with uh, just as a way of life, here we see that when we manipulate, we're actually following Satan to the point that Jesus said to Peter, he said, get away from me, well, to Satan through Peter, he said to Satan, because Satan was controlling Peter, and then he said, get away from me, because you, you prefer the things of men than the things of God. So understand this, you never win when you, we never win when we manipulate circumstances, okay? Because even if we can be in the presence of God, but if we never, because we've all been, we've all, like in the world, everybody manipulates, everybody, okay? So... We, have, we need to understand that we need to change, we need to grow, we need to bear good fruit. And from that, here we see that whenever we try to, to like make things happen on our own, we're actually following Satan. Okay, so that means that even if those things happen, it's not God who gave it to us, it's Satan. So we need to, that's the lesson of today. Whenever we make things happen, well, sorry, whenever we, we don't wait for God to tell us what to do, so we can then obey, and then that's how God wants us to do. But when, before we even ask God, we just try to make things happen before even asking God. The Bible says it doesn't matter what you're trying to do because see, here Peter was trying to keep Jesus with him and alive. So Peter was not saying like, you know, like, uh, I, you know, Peter was saying, okay, I want you alive. I want you to be safe. I want you not to get hurt. So P Peter, was, Peter in his mind, he was like, I'm doing good. I'm telling him what's good. So this, is not, I'm not talking about, you know, people who are evil and no, no, I'm talking about trying to do things that are good for God and for the church your way before even asking God. Jesus said that, that when we do that, we're actually, we're actually following Satan. Why? Because in heaven, nobody, like nobody, like everyone goes to the throne of God to worship God and then they follow what God says. Nobody in heaven, you know, gets out of the mansion and they'll be like, okay, how can I do this? How can because that happened only one time, and that was Satan who did that. Understand, the first time someone in heaven went around saying, okay, like, I'm gonna not, I'm, I, I won't ask God about this, I'll just try to get people to follow me, you know, and like, that, that <coughs> is, so now we see here, I just think got this revelation, manipulation is, is like, that's what Satan has always done. When sin came into, when, when, when sin began in heaven through through him, what he was doing, he was manipulating angels, okay, to follow him and to worship him and to take over God. So basically, God is just revealing to us a very, very, very big secret here. He's saying that, you know, whenever the reason why he said, get behind me, Satan, is because manipulation is the way of Satan. So whenever we do that means whenever whenever we do things that even are good. But without asking God and waiting on God to show us what to do about it, like we don't realize it, but we're actually like doing like Satan, okay? Even if it's good things we're trying to do. So, like following your own dreams or um, like going for like uh, if you have um, a new job, going in the field that. God doesn't want you there, or? Well, like, not so much about a job, but what you said still still uh, makes sense because, like, that's an example. I'm not talking about a job, but I'm, but, but let's, let's use a job as an example. When we manipulate, okay, God may want you to become, you know, like, um, I'll actually use my life as an example, it's perfect. So, you know, before I met Christine, I was still going to church. I was still being led. I was still, you know, taking leadership classes. But, you know, I was trying to make things happen for me, you know, to get married. And then because of it, I went to I went to school for architecture, which is nothing evil about that. Marriage is not evil. Schooling is not evil. But because I was trying to make things happen my way, so I ended up with the wrong the wrong fiance. I ended up in the wrong field, architecture. 
And then only when I began to like, but thank God, because I was always praying, you know, for God to just make everything not work, that, that is not his will. I wasn't realizing it, but I was praying for my own sabotage on my own plans without even realizing it. But I'm, I thank God he did it. Because, see, like, when we try to make things happen, in this example of my own life, I was studying architecture. I spent money to be there for two years, okay? So I wasted money. I wasted time. You know, I compromised myself. I compromised my, my, my walk of holiness, okay? So, see, like, that's what happens. See, to me, I was about to get married. I was about to have a good job. So and I'm like, you know, that that's good. But I was following Satan. Why? Because God wanted me to marry Christine, and God wanted me to become a pastor. See what I mean? So when we try to make things happen for ourselves without asking God, that's what happens. We're in a, in, in a total, totally wrong place at a total wrong time, and we may even think it's good. So, so, so this this is like not just about like a job, or whatever, but just like that's that's a, a general truth. Whenever we manipulate, okay, and simply put, by my. But my manipulation, I mean, we do things without asking God. We always follow Satan when we, when we do that, even if we're in church. Okay, so that's important to see. We, we may not lose our salvation, but we never fulfill our destiny if, 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 we're, if we're like that. And maybe even eventually, because if you follow Satan all your life like that, like, a, you know, you may even lose, lose your salvation eventually. But let's keep going. So Jesus only did and say what he saw the Father lead him to do he never tried to make things happen on his own and that's who our example is and also jesus it, jesus is the most powerful and successful human being who ever came to earth okay born of a woman because he always waited to follow god's lead think about this we live in a world when people just like, we call it the rat race. We all try to like outdo each other, whatever, not in a church, bless God. <laughs> not in this church, bless God. But the, the world calls that the rat race, okay? And Jesus, by just, you know, waiting on God and, and God says, do this, okay, he does it. He says, says that, okay, he said it. By just doing that, Jesus did what no, but no other man and woman before him ever did, okay? And what he did is like he defeated the small g god of this world. So by simply waiting for God to 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 to, to move and and doing it, Jesus actually made Satan fall from from his power over the earth. Okay, no one else ever did that before him. So the next time you feel the urge to like do something to like better yourself in life, remember, okay, you're following Satan when you do that. But when you wait for God to move, and not just wait and like not read the Bible, not pray, like watch you know crazy shows and no no, of course read the Bible, pray, go to church, but wait for God's instruction and then do that. If you learn to live your life like that, I'm telling you, that's why Jesus said that like if you come to Him, He'll take all your burdens, all your heavy weight, all your stress. Okay, that's why He's saying. That's why He said that. I'm you know because He's. If you just wait for God to say, you know, for example, let's say you, you, you said to God, you know what, me, I want to help uh, children, you know, that I just love children. Well, you know, you, you can go home and say, okay, how can I help children, you know, and start like writing down like like uh, a brainstorming. That's what the world does, okay? But God says, no. God says, okay, he says, just do, just, just do what I told you to do. And then just say, okay, like, what are my instructions? God may say, you know, just, uh, I don't know, evangelize or, or I don't know, whatever God says, even if it seems like your dream is there and God says, go there, trust me, do what God says, because that's the way that things will happen miraculously, supernatural. And one day you'll be like, wow, God brought me here to do exactly what I want to do. Because the Bible says that God... That if if we delight in God, that means if we walk like Nathanael, if we delight in God, we'll have the desires of our hearts. So that means God already knows what brings you joy. God already knows what you want. And God says, only do what I say, and you'll eventually get there. Look at Jesus. Jesus never tried to be rich. Jesus never even told people, never even told people like, hey, follow me. He just did what God said. Okay, he went one day to get baptized. 
he got baptized, then he's walking away, and then these two guys are following him, like, he, he turns around, he's like, what do you want? They're like, where, Rabbi, where do you live? It's like, okay, come check it out. So see, he was not even trying to do anything happen. <laughs> he, he knew he was supposed to be a preacher and have people follow him, but he didn't go around saying, I'm Jesus, I'm the Son of God, follow me. He didn't do that. <laughs> But that's what we do when we, when we try to make things happen. We just mess everything up. He did tell some people. He, he, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting to that. Jesus, when he began his, his ministry, he didn't, say, he didn't say to people, I'm the son of God, follow me. Like he went, he went to get baptized. Okay, and then, and then, uh, and then um, John the Baptist said, it's me who should baptize you. Okay, but then he said, it is, it is fitting for us to fulfill our righteousness. What does that mean? That means God said, get baptized by John. Okay. So, just just didn't say, but I'm supposed to preach to, to people. Why why go go you know get, get baptized by John? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so he followed. So it seemed like he was going in the opposite direction. Okay, then he got baptized, and because he obeyed at the right timing, then when he left, not only did, did John the Baptist see the Holy Ghost fall on him and say, this, "This is my son," but then because he obeyed and didn't, didn't just didn't just try to rush to preach to people. He, he, he just went where, you know, it didn't make much sense, even to John. It, it didn't make sense to John. He said, why, you, why me? You should baptize me. So even John was like, why are you here? You should be supposed to be, supposed to be there. This message is to, to tell you, even Jesus didn't try to, to say, I know what I'm supposed to do and, and do it. He just followed the Holy Spirit. And because he went in seemingly the opposite direction, then God highlighted him. Then as he walked away, John said, that's the guy, follow him. And then he's walking away. And then these two guys are like, like, Rabbi, where do you dwell? And then he said, Okay, follow me. See, he didn't he didn't say I'm supposed to get followed, so like where where to find followers. No, he just did what God said to do. So in the same way, if today in your life you feel like God said many things over your life and you're not there yet, God says, just follow my voice. Stop trying to make things happen. Follow my voice. And just like Jesus, you'll be there at the right time. Okay? So that's the power of, of letting go of Gal, not being like Peter, but just saying, you know what, Jesus, you said you're going to die. I don't like it. I like you to stay here. But you know what? It's not about me. It's about you. So let's go. Okay? So that would have been what Peter would have done if he had no Gal. But Peter had Gal, but that's okay because he got freed from that. And he was in the church after. So like I said, Jesus was the most powerful man that ever walked the earth in all the miracles, signs and wonders he did. Because he followed God, he didn't try to make anything happen. Number one. Number two, he was the most successful man who ever came to earth. We're still talking about him like 2,000 years later. Okay. And forever. Sorry? And forever. And forever. Okay. And... and all that because he always waited for God to tell him what to do. Okay, that's the, it is so simple. God is like, how come after 2,000 years the church doesn't get it? God looks down and addresses the, the church like, you know, fighting each other, manipulating all this stuff. He's like, listen, just be like Jesus, be like, be like uh, Nathan, just wait for me to move. Think about that. If all the church all over the world... We just always we all learn to wait upon God for everything. I'm telling you, there wouldn't be you know Catholic, Baptist, all this stuff. There'd just be one church called the Kingdom, and there'd be like there'd, there'd be no argument, no division, no nothing. Everything would be perfect. Okay, so that means that in our own lives, we can start at our own lives to say, you know what? From today, I'm going to start to do like Jesus. I'm just going to wait for the words of God. When I don't know, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask. I'm going to listen. And then I'm going to just do what I hear. That's the only way. That's the only way that like, we'll, we'll be like Jesus. That's the only way that the church will be united. That's the only way that we'll see miracles, signs, and wonders like Jesus. If we don't want like Jesus, we can't have what he had. <laughs> Jesus just always waited for God. Okay, He always waited for God. Think about that. Obviously, his parents, Mary and Joseph, while, while Joseph is a stepdad, obviously they knew he could do miracles because at the marriage in Canaan, in Cana, when there was no more wine, his mom, his mom said, you know what, Jesus have no more wine. So obviously she knew we could do miracles. But what, what did he say? He said, it's not my time. 
See, he didn't say, I can do wine. Let me show them how to do wine out of nothing. He didn't do that. He said, it's not my time. Okay? And then she said, whatever it says, do it. Okay? So, she, so, so what she was saying, she, she taught them what she learned by seeing him grow up. She said, whatever he says, just do it. Okay? You'll have less stress and you'll have miracles and you'll have like everything you need. Obviously, by, by growing, growing up, that's what she learned by, 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 by you know, seeing Jesus grow up. So here we see Mary, Mary, knew, Mary knew the secret. Don't push, just do what he says. And then the people of the feast said, okay, like, what do we do? He said, okay, fill the jars with water, you know, take a cup out, bring it to the, to the master of the feast. See? And again, it made no sense. We need wine? He's telling us to put water in the jars. Like, what the heck, you know? <laughs> so I'm telling you, when things make sense in your head, that's most likely because you're the one who planned to do that. Okay? When things don't make sense in your head, most likely now you heard God to say, go and do it. Okay? So, so we need to understand. We need to let go of our logic. We need to let go of the way we do things. We need to let go of trying to make things happen. That is the biggest thing that stops God from making things happen, is to, for us to always try to make things happen with our human wisdom and intelligence. We need to let go of that, God says. All of us, just let go of, of having to understand. Let go of what you're comfortable. Let go of what you're used to. God says, you letting go, you, like Satan will tell you, like, like now you're going, you're going nowhere now. But he's a liar. He's saying that because he knows by you letting go, that's when God can start to say, okay, now I'm going to work for you, finally. Satan knows that. So let's all just let go of what we're used to and, and seek God, because that's how things will happen. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. Proverbs chapter 3, and verses 3 to 8. So Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 3 to 8. We're all there? So Proverbs 3, 3 to 8 says, For let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. See again? See, now we know that when we're wise in our own eyes, we're following Satan. That's why he says, depart from evil. Okay, so be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. God is literally saying, listen, You'll get healed, total healing, when you let go of your ways and just follow me. Okay, he says, you'll even get total healing. He says, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy press shall burst out with new wine. So here God is saying, listen, he's saying, when you let go of your own ways and follow my ways, he says, that's when you enter a supernatural lifestyle, okay? Jesus was the most supernatural man on earth because he did nothing that people understood. Everything he did, people didn't get. And then he, you know, he, he, he gave revelation to those who actually had a heart to follow him. But here's the point. When we try, try to make things happen all the time, Okay, by what we're used to and, and, and planning and, and, and doing all this stuff, we are following Satan. But when we wait on God, and God says, okay, now do that, or now say this, or now, like, whatever, give that, whatever, God says that now you're in a supernatural zone. In that zone is where everything, nothing is impossible anymore. Why? Because you've, you've abandoned your own uh, wisdom or mind or understanding, and you're just like, like God... <laughs> I'm in, a, I'm, in, I'm in the liberty, I'm in, I'm in the miracle zone. So God is saying, the secret to walk in a supernatural for yourself and for others 
He said is to die to yourself. Like that verse has a whole new meaning. Dying to yourself, of course, we all know it doesn't mean to go jump off a cliff. Dying to ourselves means to die, to let go of us having to understanding and figure out things. And to just say, God, what do you say? And then do it. God says, if you, if you, if you live like that, you'll finally receive all the blessings of heaven on earth to the point of getting total healing. To the point of, he says, he says, even, even he says, thy barns will be filled with plenty. And I press the shop beside with new wine. So he says, even poverty will leave. So it's all about simply letting go of our ways and embracing God's ways. Okay. And like even John the Baptist said, like, why are you here to baptize me? You, you know, so people won't even understand you. So, so that means I guarantee you that people will tell you, what are you doing? Like, that's not like, like that's, that's foolish. When people who don't know just call you foolish, okay, that's a, tr that's a translation of the fact that like now you're being wise. Okay. When people who have, who don't know who Jesus is cause you foolish because you're, you're following God's voice. I guarantee you, you're, you're, you're doing the right thing. So that's the message. So I'm just going to raise your hands. I'm going to lead you in a, in a prayer to just abandon our ways and to just uh, follow God like that. So raise your hands and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my own ways. Take away all guile from, from me, Lord. Help me to walk, Father, in the supernatural. Help me to do the impossible. Simply by waiting on you for everything. Give me the revelation and understanding that at my, at my most humble point, which means to wait on you for everything, to seek you for direction, that at that point, Lord, where to the world I may seem weak, it is then that I shall truly be strong, because you have promised to manifest yourself to the humble. Lord, your word says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Lord, I, I choose to humble myself now. So please give me patience that you may exalt me in due time to my place of authority in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.